When I first played Starfighter Gemini, I had two thoughts. One was, GOD, I SUCK AT THIS GAME! And the other was, wow, I really should review this. Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Afternoon Dreams. This week, Starfighter Gemini, the best chump I've played in a good long while. Back in the days of Little Big Planet, some of my favorite games were bullet hell shumps by creators like Headman1000 and ZombieK6000. They were fast, crazy, and just a lot of fun to play. Starfighter Gemini reminds me of those games quite a bit. It's just as crazy, has some unique and fun mechanics, and it's really hard. Thankfully, there is a free play option with unlimited lives. I've played through the game twice, and it's just a lot of fun to spend the better part of an hour flying through space, gunning down enemy forces, and doing my best not to die. So, let's take a closer look. When the game starts up, you see that humans discover this damaged module floating through space of an unknown origin. People pick it up and start studying it, but shortly thereafter, some giant object appears above the Earth and launches a massive campaign to destroy humanity. And they get overrun pretty quickly. But the Gemini Project has developed a ship using the unknown module, and that now stands as the Earth's best hope. Piloting the ship is very simple. Move with a left stick, shoot with a square, parry with the R1, and drop a bomb with a triangle. But if that control scheme is uncomfortable for you, you can switch the controls around. I personally made R1 shoot and square parry because it's easier to hold down the R1 for minutes on end. You can also change the ship's color if you're so inclined. The areas you fight through and the enemies you fight are very creative with a lot of variance in their attack patterns. It really keeps you on your toes because you're constantly getting new stuff thrown at you and you need to adapt to it on the fly. This is especially true with bosses, because they all have powerful attacks, and a lot of them fill the screen. I also love the design of each of the bosses. They're all really cool, and the further you progress, the more unique the boss's attacks will get, forcing you to quickly figure out the best way to bust through the defenses and repel its attacks. While shooting and dodging is just like any other shump, what sets Starfighter Gemini apart is the parry mechanic. When you parry, you absorb nearby bullets and deflect some more powerful attacks like missiles or large shots. However, it's only a short burst, and it has a cooldown, so use it carefully. It can get you out of some tough spots, even against bosses, or let you repel some powerful attacks back at the enemy, but you cannot depend on it to get you out of every situation. On that note, this game is really hard. I played on free play, which gives you unlimited lives, so I could gather footage without fear of losing, but the game actually has several more difficulties, including a mode called Ace which gives you a single life. And if you can finish the game with this mode active and prove it with a photo, the creator will add your name to the scoreboard. And that's not the only goal you can strive for. There are achievements at every difficulty setting, and some you may not expect, like performing a certain set of actions in a boss fight. Final thoughts. This game is crazy fun, intricate, difficult, but very rewarding. Even if you have no interest in trying for that scoreboard, it's still worth it just for the mayhem and creativity. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the Dreamiverse. And for next time, I've got an adventure with a bunch of kids I haven't touched in a while. I think it's time I check back in with them.